Hey. Mm. What's up, guys? My boy Joey over here chugging, choking, doing lots of things. <laughs> but we're going to start a podcast without him. We don't need him. <laughs> so, this is a show called No Asked. You can see it on our lovely little light board. Or you can't if up. you're listening on Spotify. <laughs> or, yeah. No matter how hard you listen. But if you're listening on YouTube like a pro, you get it a day earlier and you get the video version. So, you with, should check that no out. No ads. No ads. But you should still go and listen to the Spotify version. because You should just paid. listen to it everywhere. <laughs> we, we get paid to buy the Spotify or whatever version. But carry on. Yeah. When yeah. we're not being money hungry <laughs> goblins, <laughs> what are we doing? We're, we're, we're answering questions that I have formulated in my little mind. And today I'm asking about morality and specifically media morality. So let's get into it. You know, <laughs> I, I feel like I should know a lot about this because I took a class last semester called uh, mm-hmm. Ethics in a Wired World <laughs> that had specifically to do with the ethics of social media. <laughs> I'm not going to do that just. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry, good. Professor whoever. <laughs> yeah, Professor Johnson, please don't watch this. <laughs> Carry on. Okay, so right now we're in such a media saturated world. The news is 24 mm-hmm. 7, 50 different channels. And that just like. You can't have enough news for that. Like, not important news anyways. So we just fill it with a bunch of filler stuff. Mm -hmm. And do you think that takes away from the bigger news? Mm. Okay, so one, I think that there actually is enough news to fill up 24 hours. I think that, like, there's enough... Like, the world is a big enough place. Let me restart that all over again. (laughs) It took Christopher Columbus a hell of a long time (laughs) to come to America. I'm not even going (laughs) to (laughs) Google it. But it it takes us, like, 24 hours or less. I don't actually know how long a flight from, like, New York to to, uh, England is at at this point. But I know it's a lot less than what it took him. (laughs) I know we can sail it in less time than it took him to sail. So all I'm trying to say is that uh, the world has become smaller as far as distance and travel and communications, but it's still... A giant uh, rock, you know, three uh, third planet from the sun, whatever. Mm-hmm. So that being said, there's a lot of news that goes on that doesn't get covered. Mm-hmm. Uh, we in media, when I was uh, taking a broadcast, uh, I learned, you know, if it bleeds, it leads. Mm-hmm. So basically, they take all of this important news that they get at the beginning of the day, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, that's important, and people should know that." But we've also got this stuff where it's like, you know, someone was attacked. There was a bombing. There was a shooting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 50 people died. We're going to cover that instead. And so I think that there's a lot more news out there that doesn't get covered that should get covered. Mm -hmm. That gets marked as either evergreen or just not important enough Mm -hmm. to to show up in the news. Uh, There's actually a whole movie about it called Nightcrawler, I believe. Yeah, with Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where all he does is chase after... um, horrible crimes and then mm-hmm. in the end like ends up kind of being a part of one yeah like he mm-hmm. he ta- it, spoiler alert he uh goes <laughs> from a movie that came out in like 1990 <laughs> or something no no it's pretty new is it's it? like 2016 or really yeah. is it that new yeah it really is mm-hmm. damn it feels Whoops. like it, it, <laughs> it well i think it takes place earlier than that so maybe that's why mm-hmm. uh, I, I feel like it's earlier but but i digress so Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he ends up going and taking part of a uh, being in an active crime scene. He moves bodies just because to then it, it like better, yeah, worse. he makes it looks like it it's better. Mm-hmm. Um, so in in media, a lot of times things are pushed aside. Yeah, but saying that there's enough news in the world to have news twenty four seven is the same way of like eat all your food because there's people starving mm-hmm. in Africa. Is like that food's not gonna get there, you mm-hmm. know? Like. Of course, we have enough news for the world, mm-hmm. but we're not going to hear about these people okay, who died in oh, Philippines. Relevant news, okay. yeah, for us. Or okay, here. I suppose that's fair. Local news just won't cover mm-hmm. world stuff. So, what was your original question? Sorry, I was just like My, trying to loop back. There's so much news out there that when we see all this like little filler news, mm-hmm. does it take away from the bigger news? Uh, yes and no. So the thing about these 24-hour channels is also that they do kind of loop some of that stuff back around. Uh, and that follows under the mentality of the bigger your audience is, the more you need to repeat something. Mm-hmm. So I think in that case, 24-hour news kind of is good because then you get repeated and people are more informed because it's like, oh, okay, yeah, it goes on a loop. I've already seen this. I know it. But then people who maybe don't tune in like in the morning didn't get to see that kind of stuff that, mm-hmm. that was on the news, but then they see that stuff later. Uh, but I also think that's why morning news is also kind of trash because like <laughs> if you look at like uh, what is it, good morning america good morning usa or whatever sure. the the thing is they always have like these like little puff pieces 
mm-hmm. about it's like ooh this this person's dog can skateboard yeah <laughs> it's like wow look at this and you're just like drinking your morning coffee like wow that's pretty cool <laughs> and and now we just you know go, go on reddit or watch I almost said Vine. Oh, it's dead. <laughs> we watch TikTok. I don't even watch TikToks. I feel TikTok makes me feel old. Really? Like, <laughs> You're like I don't get this newfangled technology. Yeah, it's not just that I don't get it. It's just that I'm, it's partially I don't get it. Yeah. But it's also like they're so young. The people mm-hmm. using TikTok are like 16. And I'm yeah. not. <laughs> and it and, just reminds me. Yeah. Well, it, it, it feels weird to be out of high school and still laughing at these high school level memes that mm-hmm. are like made for high schoolers. Because mm-hmm. we are young but, adult, you know, yeah. we fit in that category. Yeah. But we're like also like just enough removed from it that it mm-hmm. feels a little creepy and a little weird. For sure. Yeah. But we, we had to talk about this before. Um, I don't think it hurts too bad. Mm-hmm. I I understand what you're what you're saying, but I think that news first and foremost is an entertainment yeah process they're trying to make money Mm -hmm. trying to keep you there and so they need to have something else to go because there isn't enough big news i guess Mm -hmm. uh there's enough you know news to cover it's like oh yeah there were you know say like chicago or something there's shootings every day you've got that kind of stuff but then you know local news is important global news is important i think they do an okay job of mixing the two I don't have a solution for yeah. how like to fix them if that's what you're looking mm-hmm. for. I'm not that smart. <laughs> Please just fix the whole media system. Fix the whole general. media system. All mm-hmm. right. So top down rebuild. Uh, Is it a pyramid structure or a circular structure? Uh, it dude, makes a difference. I think it's a it's a decahedron or whatever. <laughs> Dodecahedron. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Volume. Dodecahedron. <laughs> that's what it is. Um, no, so um, a lot of these changes of like the accessibility of news and stuff has come around with the internet. And along with that is like the job of journalist Mm -hmm. can almost be given to anyone because anyone with a phone can take these videos. And Mm -hmm. while they don't have the stigma and like the accessibility to get it to their audience, Mm -hmm. things can go viral and you can take a video of anyone at any time. And is that dangerous? Yes, Yes. (laughs) that's absolutely dangerous. Having a society that is so able to go viral at any given moment is dangerous as hell to a lot of people. Is it dangerous to people who us, the lowly commoner folk, would like care about? Mm-hmm. Not really. It's not dangerous to the common folk. It is dangerous, however, to any celebrity. It's dangerous oh, yeah. to Donald Trump. It's dangerous to any high-level ranking official mm-hmm. um, because if some random schmuck catches them on like an off moment, snaps mm-hmm. a picture, snaps a video, you know, full-on TMZ takedown kind of stuff. For sure. Uh, but... At the same time, there's a whole nother side of it that is only just starting to be realized, I feel like. Um, and there's a big thing on, on YouTube right now where they're pushing back against conspiracy theories. Uh, and maybe not pushing back. That might be the wrong terminology. Mm-hmm. But essentially, when you start Googling things, so uh, if you were to look up on YouTube, should I vaccinate my kids? Mm-hmm. The first thing that comes up, I believe, is a government thing or like something that's like, is approved Mm -hmm. but then every linked video after that is a conspiracy theory about autism uh, yeah about anything Mm -hmm. bad that you can think about why people want to not vaccinate exactly and it's because they get that watch time they get those views you're gonna watch these things that of course of course you're gonna watch a video that tells you terrible things because it's like Mm -hmm. um what's the phrase it's like a train wreck you just can't look away or whatever and so yeah it becomes exactly like that Mm -hmm. and And if you think they cause those things mm -hmm. you want to get your beliefs reaffirmed yeah because otherwise oh yeah and told you wrong and nobody mm-hmm. likes that and the internet at this point is so vast that if you are looking for a specific answer you will find it oh yeah. you're like if you're looking um uh college humor did a bit on this with um if google was a guy they had a had a skit that went on for way too long but um <laughs> and they had like six episodes of if google was a guy mm-hmm. um where one of them was like it's like, show me things about why I should vaccinate my kids. And he like comes up with all these like giant paper stacks. It's like, here you go. And he's like, show me a reason why I shouldn't. It's like, I found this one document. <laughs> and she's like, I knew it. <laughs> and like, it's a comedy skit. Mm-hmm. But I think that's really based in how, yeah. Yeah, how people look for answers. You know, if you mm-hmm. look for something hard enough, you're going to find it. True. Um, so in that sense, having a society that is so able to put out fake news for mm-hmm. lack of a better term uh 
or what, what is it? alternative facts <laughs> yeah uh is is terrifying in a way but it's also very dangerous mm-hmm. um because you need these things to be fact checked like the that's the one thing that journalisms are journalisms uh, the wall street journal new york times mm-hmm. just whatever reputable else reputable like, sources yeah they they have that reputation uh now however in recent uh times they have started to lose some of their reputation they've taken a few dings Mm -hmm. uh vice news is the biggest one right now where it's like they were reputable and now they're just putting out kind of whatever yeah (laughs) and people like all right this is becoming just not fact checked and so that's uh in my opinion the thing that helps those big places those big um not agencies corporations yeah there you go Mm -hmm. uh they are able to be fact checked but still, like it's so easy to to force something to go viral if you have enough followers. If Definitely. you can put out these conspiracy theories and people keep watching them, and so you gain a following, and so then anything mm-hmm. you say, true or fake, then becomes uh, just not. Definitely. It doesn't it doesn't matter because mm-hmm. the the, pu- the public the popular opinion has already been changed and swayed. That's fair, but that's my opinion. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Now there's another thing about like the oversaturation of um, <laughs> causes and things um, mm-hmm. would be like the social justice warriors. Okay. And there are plenty of worthy causes that don't get enough um, voices out there, especially mm-hmm. in mainstream media. And so mm-hmm. they have turned to the internet, but then that causes like a super saturation of different causes that all should be looked at. And do you think that since they're all flooding at very similar times that it causes them all to just get categorized and dismissed? I think it's possible. I mean, if you put everything under the same umbrella of social justice, Mm -hmm. then we're going to see it's like, oh, wow, there's just a shit ton of stuff that's wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't know where to start. And so you will get dismissed. Whereas before it was like, like, let's say in like the 60s, it was like, we know racism is like a Mm -hmm. really big problem. And still is. That didn't get fixed. But all the attention was focused on that and like mm-hmm. going towards fixing that. Mm-hmm. Is it better just to have like resources dedicated to like one thing? Man, this has got me thinking about like old, like uh, RTS video games <laughs> where it's just like, Oh, do I dedicate all of my resources uh, to like <laughs> a little mining command and or all do that? Yeah. Vampires. Yeah. So it's like, mm-hmm. it's got me thinking kind of like that. And if you were to ask me with that mindset, then absolutely. I'm going to dedicate more sources to this one thing to get it taken care of. Because in my mind, it's a little bit easier to go down a checklist. Mm -hmm. And if you just, rather than working on a whole bunch of things at once, you can work on like two or three things and get them done really efficiently, really efficiently, rather than having like a thousand people spread out for Mm -hmm. 500 problems where you have two people on every problem. Uh, That being said, Mm -hmm. uh, the internet has led to, you know, it's easier to be Mm -hmm. like, oh, hey, this is an issue. Oh, hey, this is an issue. Oh, hey, this is an issue. Mm-hmm. And so your attention is just so spread thin. Uh, yeah, and I feel like saying, like, we've addressed this as an issue. Mm-hmm. This is an issue. Mm-hmm. We think that solves it. And yeah. it's like, oh, we've acknowledged you. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Oh, it's yeah. Like, awareness is way different than, like, doing something about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, people spread awareness for breast cancer every year. Mm-hmm. There's thousands of dollars that, thousands, millions of dollars that go towards uh, AIDS awareness breast cancer awareness um any other kind of awareness Mm -hmm. that's that's out there those organizations don't necessarily do anything towards fixing it yeah um there was a big thing about that with uh it was read something i don't remember what it was but i believe bono was involved with it where they were spreading uh not spreading raising millions of dollars for aids awareness Mm -hmm. but they were pocketing a bunch of that because you know they were a non-profit but they were making so much it was okay to like for yeah okay for them to skim <laughs> off the top uh and they thought no one would notice but then like like hey you guys are like raising a ton of money for awareness and we already know there's a problem with aids we mm. already know this and so with that kind of stuff that you get people kind of taking advantage of these horrible situations these diseases and everything mm-hmm. else by falling under is like oh we're raising awareness for it for sure and so there is definitely that idea i feel like that a lot of people still think where it's like oh i'm um, raising awareness for it and this this is a good thing that's 
while it's good to raise awareness for topics that don't necessarily have enough um, eyes on them, mm-hmm. things like I actually couldn't tell you because I'm not <laughs> I'm, I'm not a good person. I'm not that into mm-hmm. uh, anything social justice. Uh, I should be. And I think more people should be because I I mean, I then become part of the problem mm-hmm. where it's like, oh, yeah, I know all of these things. Yeah. Are bad. People have shouted them at me mm-hmm. and I was paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. Well, OK, here's here's one. Uh, child labor in America is a good one where like people should have more awareness of it, but nothing is being done about it. That's something that I think, in my opinion, yes, raise awareness for it. Now, should we raise awareness for breast cancer? Yes and no. Mm-hmm. I think yes, because then it's prevalent in our minds. Like, yes, this is something that is still an issue. Mm-hmm. But we should not put quite so much towards it as a people because that's just going towards letting people know every year, every six months, every four months, hey, there's still breast cancer. Mm-hmm. You know, we need something more towards, hey, we've cured breast cancer. Yeah. Hey, we have uh, right. a new treatment for breast cancer. Hey, we have this new thing that keeps people from getting breast cancer. That's mm-hmm. like, um, there was just a, uh, a thing recently, well, fairly recent. I don't know how actually recent it is, uh, but like the HIV pill, mm-hmm. like that's a big deal. That's something I think should get more funding for awareness mm-hmm. for, because I feel like it's kind of marketed funny. Um, but I feel like it's very similar to a lot of marketing mm-hmm. is where the big people are just like, just putting it in your face constantly. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, I think the marketing effective to me is like, hey, this new thing has happened. Check mm-hmm. it out. Yeah. But, like, you just reminding me that you're there doesn't do a whole lot mm-hmm. for me. And so that's like breast cancer. Whereas they should just be like, hey, this pill is out that could help you <laughs> prevent mm-hmm. HIV and things like that. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there's there's definitely that issue. I don't know how far I strayed from your original question. I do that a lot. <laughs> yeah, it happens. <laughs> and then you bring attention to it and then I forget. <laughs> <laughs> you just have it highlighted. I really so that every, should. every time I'm just like, oh, hey, tangent for four <laughs> minutes or whatever. And then I'm like, what was the original question? And you're just like, oh, it was it was this yeah, thing. I'm right. Glad. I really should. Yeah, but, but I didn't. But no, like mm-hmm. that's that's definitely an issue. Um, HIV pill, though. If you don't have HIV. Look into it because it can prevent you from actually ever getting HIV, mm-hmm. uh, which is amazing. Like that's that's fantastic that we have that technology. There should be awareness for it. Uh, breast cancer, not to, not to like take away from that. Like it is terrible. Mm-hmm. I've had people in my family who have had. It. I've had many people in my family pass away from cancer, mm-hmm. uh, and I think you know it's terrible. There's things that should be done. Less awareness, more research. That's uh, right. And and by that, I don't just mean like more funding for research. I think more research into as an invest, not investor, <laughs> as a uh, donator, uh, you should look into where you're giving your money. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's true with any charity because that's there's right. there's so many that are like, oh, yeah, we, we put money towards like this specific thing that's a part of this overarching problem like child labor, like mm-hmm. uh, AIDS, like uh, poverty. But they use the like poverty porn or whatever to kind of be like, oh, yeah, you know, we're we're helping them mm-hmm. by like this asterisk margin. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, yeah, Tom- we went in and gave food to this very specific subset mm-hmm. of people in this one neighborhood. Exactly. And- mm-hmm. Or like Tom's. Uh, Tom's was under this whole thing for a long time where uh, it's like buy a pair of shoes. We give a pair of shoes. Mm-hmm. And. They're like, we don't need shoes. Yeah, we don't need <laughs> shoes anymore. Like, we've, we're fine. We uh-huh. need food. Yeah. We need housing. We need mm-hmm. medical care. Mm-hmm. We need, uh, you know, in some of the more remote regions, we need a uh, well-organized, like... Uh, Infrastructure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but yeah, the people who were making shoes, they were like, what the heck? Like, <laughs> yeah, just like, stop giving me shoes. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so, like, yeah, you were in those kinds of issues. Fair enough. But. Yeah, Um, and we touched on it a little bit that like celebrities have trouble with this like high accessibility of Mm -hmm. videos and things do they need to be held to a higher standard people give them that reputation a lot Mm -hmm. that since they're on this like platform they should have to like understand that this is going to happen to them Mm -hmm. and i feel like that's a false statement yes and no um so should they be held to a higher standard no should they understand they're held to a higher standard yes yeah um with millions of views and with popularity becomes polarity and the ability to sway things in one direction or another. Uh, the example I'll use is like Taylor Swift. There was a big thing uh, back during elections where 
Taylor Swift, I believe, said who she was voting for or something like that. Oh, yeah. And people thought uh, government officials were trying to be like, hey, you know, you can't say who you're voting for because then, like, we can see that that shifted in this direction. Mm -hmm. They can see that. They can't necessarily prove one mm -hmm. way or another that she is, like, a singular person actually swayed the votes. But you know, that that power is mm -hmm. then drawn into question as like, oh, if like, where's the cutoff for like these mm -hmm. kinds of things? Like uh, celebrity endorsements have been a huge deal for you know quite a while now. You know, you see, oh, yeah. you see Shaquille O'Neal with uh, his like gold bond or icy hot or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, Terry Crews with Old Spice. Mm -hmm. uh, and so like we, we've seen these things for a while, but then like getting into political statements, getting into things that, maybe could be spreading misinformation mm -hmm. they should definitely be aware of what they're doing and research it before the fact yeah um but, there's one nba player who's a flat earther and he like very frequently said and like exposed <laughs> uh what's the word um divulged his opinion and things like that like telling people that he's a flat earther and this is why he believes it and i think recently yeah, he's been forced to recant that <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry what the earth <laughs> what, what shape is the earth? <laughs> dodecahedron oh okay <laughs> i thought we talked about this earlier. yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> okay. two two dimensional though two dimensional correct well no it's like it's like a like a no 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 two two dimensions no <laughs> i'm sorry how many is a dodeca <laughs> dodeca is 12 sides i'm sorry i can't count that high. <laughs> sorry what is that i'm sorry i'm sorry you're struggling no no hold on help me out here there's one dimension there's one dimension there's two dimensions there's two dimensions and then then there's a third no, one no, after no, that. Whoa, whoa, that's it. <laughs> it I'm sorry. What? Do you not understand? No, I don't. You can, so count, you can count one, then two, and uh -huh, then there's then, three. No, no, no. So if I have one <laughs> apple and you have two apples, we uh -huh. combine them. How many apples do we have? <laughs> Ice wall? <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, he was pushing flat earth theory. Uh -huh. And then like recently he like, was forced to recant. Like, he was not happy about it. Mm -hmm. But he's like, I'm sorry that I have like swayed people. I was just kind of doing it as a joke. And like... Like, okay. <laughs> you realize that millions of, like, children, like, look uh, up to you as being, like, one of the top 50 basketball players. God, on that note, thinking about uh, Flat Earth and millions of children, Jake Paul is making a documentary about yep, Flat Earth thing. right now, mm -hmm. which he takes a stance at the end of the documentary. I don't believe it's been released yet, so we don't know what, mm -hmm. like, he's been talking about it. But I'm, like, I'm really worried about anything not sorry i i said jake paul logan paul is doing it i'm really worried about anything that guy has to say to mm -hmm. try and teach the next generation something mm -hmm. because so far all he's taught them is how to be <laughs> insensitive yeah. and culturally misappropriated and just not okay which he's apologized for but then in my opinion all that does is then further just kind of like make him entitled to be like oh well now i can just say sorry and get out of it mm -hmm. right no no that's not how life works nope. sorry all you nine-year-olds yeah. <laughs> you're gonna have to learn how to deal with your repercussions because unless you've got i don't even know how many millions of subscribers he has yeah. uh following and money and mm -hmm. you know <laughs> yeah and makes you a know, you're able to be uh monetized because for whatever reason you're content is suitable for children mm -hmm. <laughs> uh but yeah no it's uh, celebrities should be more informed um before they take these stances uh are they going to be no mm -hmm. one they're people two a lot of times they're getting paid so some of them don't care mm -hmm. uh and yeah that's just life in a sense it sounds terrible to say that like hopeless you know what i mean to be like, oh, well, you know, that's life. That's just how mm -hmm. it's going to be. But you can't really control people in one way or another for like, those kind of stances. Now, should people be held accountable to their, like, advertisements? I know a lot of people say, like, I will only, like, mm -hmm. promote a product that I use and care for. But, like, mm -hmm. not everyone can do that. Not every product can say that they have people yeah. who use their products. Okay. So this does bring to mind another uh, kind of scandal. So I believe it's Nick Jonas? I could be wrong. I'm not going to actually, I won't name names just in case I have it messed up. So some celebrity. So I won't say Nick Jonas. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, re, so I recant Nick Jonas. Every time I've said Nick Jonas, replace it with something else. Replace it with a fart noise. Um, uh, so a celebrity 
in a Hollywood celebrity in America mm -hmm. was marrying a celebrity from Bollywood from India. And there was this whole thing is like, oh, they're getting married just so that she can have more fame or just so that he gets more publicity for this and their audiences can merge or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and they were just giving a whole bunch of shit about this. Like, no, it's we're cool. we, we love each other, which is great and sweet. But she got in trouble because she's like, I would never um, do something just to promote like the power of the color of skin or something like mm -hmm. that. I don't remember exactly the phrasing that may not exactly make sense how I said it. Uh, but essentially she was saying that color of skin doesn't matter. Uh, we're not getting married because of the color of our skin. We're getting married because we love each other. Mm -hmm. Um, she got in a little bit of flack because she endorsed a product, uh, that was sold in India and marketed in India that was marketed to lighten your skin. Mm -hmm. Uh, because, uh, in a lot of countries being fair skinned is considered a better thing mm -hmm. like even even myself so i'm i'm hispanic i'm mexican mm -hmm. uh in mexico there is a class system as far as i understand it cuz i'm not i've never been to mexico uh where the lighter your skin are the lighter your skin is mm -hmm. uh the better you're treated and the more higher That's fair. Of it's just like a beauty standard exactly. to be held by mm -hmm. um which to me doesn't make sense like mm -hmm. just as a person, because I don't see things that way. I wasn't mm -hmm. necessarily raised to see things that way. And yeah. I can see thing, the but... historical context behind it, but yeah. not like the moral. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's what they were marketing. And then people were like, hey, you endorsed this product in the past and you're saying that skin color doesn't matter. But this product specifically says that the color of your skin determines how beautiful you are, how mm -hmm. successful you're going to be. Uh, and so... That leads back to your question in a way. Hopefully you have it highlighted to so remind <laughs> me what it was. <laughs> that the uh, should celebrities be held accountable? Uh, no. In the same way? No. No. Um, a lot of times they're contracted into those things. Mm -hmm. So yes and no. So yes because they're signing a contract and they are aware of what their product is. Mm-hmm. But no, because sometimes they're being forced into that by their agent, by whoever is managing them, like that kind of stuff. And they are led to believe it's like, oh, this will further your career. Mm -hmm. Because you'll be seen on this, you can get this job, and you can get just this job and all that. And that's kind of how showbiz kind of unfortunately sometimes tends to go. But it's <laughs> we're gonna take a break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so sometimes they're coerced in these deals. And they know what they're signing, but they're kind of forced to sign them because they're told it will better their career. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, that's how Hollywood goes sometimes. But because of that alone, I will say that they shouldn't be held accountable for some of the things that they endorse. Mm -hmm. Purely because they're just out there trying to hustle, you know? Like Yeah, and most of them are actors who like need to make money somehow. Mm -hmm. And they don't know yeah. how to do that, so they have someone... <laughs> helping them which yeah. may or may not have their mm -hmm. other interest in art. Yeah, I'm not sure how many actors we have out there working or like in our audience. Mm -hmm. But take it from someone who does film slash photography slash graphic design slash anything <laughs> else because please for the love of God please hire me. <laughs> like that is exactly what it's like being an actor but you're more like pin and hold in because like as production I can do this whole array of things. But sometimes an actor literally only acts. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so it's like, I will act and wait tables mm -hmm. and work at Burger King or whatever. So like getting a deal where it's like, oh, hey, you know, you're you're going to market this thing that says that your skin color matters or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we're going to pay you $300,000 to do it. And we're going to give you syndication for it, which off, wouldn't often happen because commercials, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you know, we're going to pay you this obscene amount of money to do this thing, to say these four lines and be on camera and on set for one day. Mm -hmm. uh, and because you have, you know, a certain Twitter following or a certain Instagram following or whatever, we'll pay you that much. But what you actually believe doesn't matter because after you sign this contract, you cannot say anything but good things about this product for the next two and a half, three years. Mm -hmm. um, and so because of that, I will say no. To, to answer your question just in full. Mm -hmm. But okay, so we touched on it a little bit earlier about how like Taylor Swift had this like influence on the polls and things mm -hmm. like that. So I found this lovely little graphic by Us Magazine that showed that the wealthy have an influence on whether a bill gets passed 
but the popularity amongst the regular people has no influence on whether a bill gets passed. Mm. And so I was wondering, <laughs> is that dangerous? Is that an inherently bad thing? <sighs> I have to take a stance on this, huh? Uh-oh. <laughs> um, let me take a good old sip. Old bill. It's purely to stall for time. <laughs> Nothing to do with thirst. I'm trying to think. <laughs> so it's really, <laughs> what you're asking me is a very complicated question to yes, just like, is throw out there which is why i'm glad that we prepare for this show <laughs> i um, give you like five minutes warning <laughs> yeah five minutes warning and a few other questions to mm. like <laughs> to like really muddy up the water to get my <laughs> my opinions drowned out i'm still stalling mm-hmm. um, so mm. call me joseph because i'm stalling <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't know so okay I'll, I'll put it this way. So as someone who has come from a lower class community in a lower class household, mm-hmm. I think that's a little bit fucked up. Mm-hmm. But as someone who can look at things objectively as a whole, I understand how that is more of a true democracy than anything else. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure if that this seems off to me that more people are in a tax bracket or a, or a range mm-hmm. of income that is not affecting the poor. I feel like the poverty levels, maybe not even poverty isn't like, the mm-hmm. right word but like lower class usually makes up the greater amount mm-hmm. so like that, that kind of worries me a little bit with that graph like they're yeah. they to be specific yeah it's the top 10 percent uh-huh. have like a flow that's like halfway to like what the ideal of like 100 mm-hmm. percent means it'll go through all the time okay they're about halfway there the top 10 percent the bottom 90 percent has no influence okay so, so that's bad that's a huge way that's yeah. that's a that's a real bad then mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the way you were, the way it was, as mentioned before, and the way I kind of saw it was like top before, half, like, to bottom yeah, half. top half to bottom half, mm-hmm. and so that to me seemed a little bit off. Now that makes more sense, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that is to me not great. Mm-hmm. Uh, I understand how it's like they have a majority of the sway, but I do think that there's something to be said about the commoners, like the commonwealth and people who really do grow up on the streets, really do grow up in in lower class households. Mm-hmm they are the people who should be given an opportunity to work their way up. And that's kind of like the American dream or whatever, you know, yeah. like it's like, Oh yeah, I can stake out my, anyone can land. be that top percent. Exactly. Or it can work mm-hmm. their way up to be that top percent or work their way up. So their children can be that top percent, uh, which in itself <laughs> is a little bit depressing to be like, Oh yeah, I'm going to work hard my entire life <laughs> and leave it up to my kids for to our bloodline yeah. to keep it going. Uh, I wouldn't want that, you know, oh, I would, yeah. but at the same time, you know, like mm-hmm. you're, you're trying to better the world in, as you see it. So like your mm-hmm. own world, um, but because the top 10% are controlling these mm-hmm. laws, which get passed. Yeah. The rich get rich to some poor, poor, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And it makes it the entry barriers mm-hmm. go up. So I, yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> it's, it's pretty clear mm-hmm. that that's not good. Uh, in my opinion, do you have a differing opinion or a different way yeah, to the think only, about it? If you're truly inspired by democracy, mm-hmm. then considering that the rich have a say mm-hmm. compared to no one having a say is more democratic mm-hmm. and that the dream is to become rich. And we have a system where theoretically you can become rich, that it, it's better than nothing. But there are so many other things <laughs> wrong with that. Yeah. So, so there's a sliver of good. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll ask you this. Do you think it's possible to run a true democracy like efficiently? No. OK. No. Yeah. Democracies are not great. The thing that they do well is they replace bad leaders if that becomes a problem mm-hmm. because, you know, the people just vote in someone new. But like efficiency wise and things, democracies don't run super well because people have lots of different opinions. They are uh, the people are very easily swayed by the media, as we've mm-hmm. been talking about, and like famous figureheads. They can easily like pull people in directions mm-hmm. without any influence or any studies. Yeah. Okay. Like we said, like flat earthers, they can just be like, "I'm a flat earther," and then instantly ten thousand people become flat earthers. Yeah, because they're following. Mm-hmm. More often times than not, people are sheep rather than shepherds. So yeah. So like that's kind of why we have a republic is because. We pay people to understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. And then we just kind of tell them what our opinions are. And so even that's still, yeah. there's rough areas in that yeah. too. It's like what happens when like the figureheads start to form their own opinions and start mm-hmm. to care less about what everyone then else Then we is. replace them, which is, like I said, democracy is yeah. one strong suit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I think we fairly well <laughs> tackled that one. Fuck mm-hmm. your graph. <laughs> <laughs> right. Fuck your complicated it's questions, bad. Noah. <laughs> nope. So, yeah, um, wrapping up, 
I'm sorry I brought this down and didn't have a road to bring it up upon. But the internet is a good thing and it has done lots of good things like given us a voice to mm-hmm. spread to these people who I hope enjoy our lovely show called Noah Asked on our channel. <laughs> That's so <laughs> lovely right now. Oh my God. Yeah, people just were forced to listen to my like stumbling uh-huh. over trying to find a political a opinion. way not to like yeah. drown yourself. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. No, but this is our show and we do it weekly mm-hmm. and sometimes it's happy sometimes it gets a little darker mm-hmm. and so but we always have a good time yeah we do and so if you're watching the youtube version you can now see our lovely little sign called it says no ass <laughs> episode <that>. seven <laughs> <laughs> uh you can talk to us we're on twitter we look at that twice a day and at least we look at it a lot it's not healthy but <laughs> yeah tweet at us using the hashtag no asked um we are on Twitter at humorish underscore TM. You can also use the Gmail that we have to ask questions, submit topics, and that is humorish.tm at gmail.com. If you are watching on YouTube, you get it a day earlier and no ads, and it is the video form. So just automatically better. It's just better in every way. There's not a worse version. You know what the audio people miss out on? They miss out on like the long slips and the hands and the bumping of the microphone you know where that sound that little bump comes from (laughs) (laughs) so yeah if you're on youtube hit the notification bell we're at humorish is our channel um yeah and check us out later this week for i don't know though hosted by our one and only the joey and i'll be back next week on tuesday for you youtube watchers and wednesday for everyone else thanks Bye. bye